Hey all here, OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the BenQ Travolo S. Yup, it's BenQ, the company known for computer monitors, but this is one of their first audio products. To compete in a very crowded space, they decided to make the Travolo S the world's smallest electrostatic speaker. So unless you're an audiophile, the term electrostatic is probably going to be quite alien. And that's because it's a very different type of technology than traditional speakers that uses a round cone or a driver. This time around, it's completely flat. It relies on a membrane that is electrically charged and as a result is able to bend either to the front or to the rear of the speaker, producing sound. The benefits of using electrostatic technology is that it produces much less distortion. In fact, less than 1%. That is particularly impressive because with typical low-cost Bluetooth speakers, if you turn the volume all the way down, you're bound to hear a lot of hissing or a humming, almost like a white noise in the background. But BenQ claims you won't hear any of that, even if you play back music in a really quiet environment. So it should sound crystal clear for highs, uh, mids, and trebles. The downside is on its own, electrostatic speakers don't have a lot of bass, so BenQ built in two uh, kind of passive radiators facing frontwards. Another constraint of this technology is it's typically really large. You can see in an entire room, it's almost a human's height. So the fact that they were able to squeeze this into a form factor that's portable, it's a small Bluetooth unit, is also quite impressive. Those typical taller, larger units sell for thousands of dollars. Uh, this one here is under 200, which is still kind of expensive for a wireless Bluetooth speaker, but it's also easier to swallow. Now, if we take a quick look, the packaging here is quite simple. We just have kind of Bluetooth on the side. The built-in battery can last up to 18 hours of continuous audio playback. There's also a 3D sound mode that you can activate for watching movies. And there's also built-in NFC if you want to pair it really quickly with an Android or an iOS device. So here is what it looks like with the two arms folded outwards. Inside, we have just the speaker itself lying underneath. There's also a quick user manual, a quick start guide. And we also have the AC adapters, including various prongs for different countries to charge and provide power. It is using micro USB. So we've also got a quick carrying pouch for protecting it when on the go, and then just the speaker itself. Initial impressions would be this is a lot smaller than I was really expecting. Here it is next to a Android smartphone, the Galaxy Note 5. So you can see that uh, in terms of size, it really is going to be fairly simple to just take with you, put into a backpack. On the back, we see the BenQ logo. The construction is made out of a fusion between polycarbonate plastic and aluminum alloy and feels very hefty in the hand. There's also the micro USB port for power. You can use it when plugged in, by the way, and also an auxiliary input if you want to use it as a wired speaker instead. On the back here, we do have a soft touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. The front here just has the two accents for the two kind of base passive radiators, and then the left and the right channels, which just fold upwards uh, like so, and they have a very thin kind of uh, frame, as you can see there, because of the way electrostatic technology functions. I'll also point out that there's a slight taper to the soft touch rubber feet, so when you sit it down on a desk, it's slightly pointed upwards to project the sound better towards you. The very top features the NFC contact area and the controls, including things like volume, pairing it using Bluetooth, turning it on, and playing and pausing the sound.
Alright, so some takeaways from that music test. Overall, the audio quality is excellent. The biggest thing that I noticed compared to a regular Bluetooth speaker was the extremely low distortion. So you heard in that test how I turned the volume all the way down for a second. So the volume was on level 1 or level 2, but at the same time, the sound in a really quiet room you can hear is still crystal clear. Usually with Bluetooth speakers, when you turn the volume all the way down, you hear a bit of that hiss noise in the background. But it seems like the use of these electrostatic technology has really alleviated that issue, which is impressive considering it's still Bluetooth 4.2, it's not even the latest Bluetooth 5.0, so mids and highs are just crystal clear, especially if you listen to acoustic music, if you listen to vocals, uh, if you listen to people speak, it just is so sharp and precise. The 3D mode also works really well. You just saw me try to turn it on at the beginning of that test. I found that it sometimes increases the volume ever so slightly, but also increases the sense of spaciousness within the sound. It seems like uh, the entire room around you is surrounded by whatever you're listening to, which really helps if you're watching an action film or a TV show. It really comes to life. Things I also noticed while watching a little bit of TV earlier on was that sounds like a cell phone ringing uh, in the film just was so crystal clear just because of how well these speakers do in particular with mids and highs. Now bass you can hear is also good, uh, it's thanks to this dual passive radiator in the middle here, but it's not the thumpiest speaker in the world. Something else I notice is it doesn't get as loud as on some other comparable maybe $200 Bluetooth speakers. So if you want something with the most maximum volume or if you want something that has the most kind of vibration or super punchy bass, that's not where this really stands out. It stands out in its spaciousness of sound and in crystal clear mids and highs. One last thing I want to point out is these are bi-directional uh, speakers. So the electrostatic technology means that there is also sound coming up from the back here. In fact, these grills you can see are very similar looking to the front. Uh, the volume is not quite as loud, but what they try and uh, tell you to do in the instructions is you should position it towards a wall where there's a flat surface. It actually vibrates the sound off of those walls and tries to reflect it back at you to amplify the sound. And it does kind of help. So you can try to experiment with where you place this speaker and it does also make a difference. So very interesting in how these wings um, are kind of dual-sided. So if you're looking for a speaker that has as little distortion as possible and you don't need something that has as commercially punched a base, then this is definitely a model that's worth taking a closer look at. You can check out more details in the links down below, but this is a very promising start, I think, for BenQ in the audio space. Ultimately, one reason why this technology is more expensive, in my opinion, is because of economies of scale. Just because the way to manufacture this is a lot newer, but hopefully if this becomes popular enough, more manufacturers will try it out and that will lower the cost in the future which would be fantastic because I think the audio quality here really is better than a comparable traditional Bluetooth speaker of the same size. So you can check out more details in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been the BenQ Travolo S Electrostatic Mini Bluetooth Speaker.